Something I've been really interested in for the last handful of years has been the impact of uh, removing teeth. It seems like common practice, like, of course, just get your wisdom teeth out. Even if there's nothing wrong, just get them out of there because they're going to be a pain in the butt later on in life. And then not thinking that perhaps there is some retaining value to uh, those teeth taking up space. Uh, do you have, what are your, your, your thoughts on, on root canals? One, from like a musculoskeletal perspective, and then two, from, um, you know, if, any, if there's any other issues that could, could manifest from that. Yeah, so, yeah, common practice is in Western world to remove wisdom teeth, correct? Um, I would say 80% of all teenagers get them removed because of crowding, spacing issues. They need it for their orthodontic treatment, for having nice straight teeth. But basically, having no place or no space, not enough space for teeth is a problem in itself. So, and this starts even earlier. So if it's possible, just go from there. If it's possible to keep wisdom teeth because the jaw will grow and there's enough space, obviously keeping healthy teeth is the best option. But why is this a problem in the Western world? That's actually something that Weston Price studied already. I don't know if you're familiar with his work. Yeah, big, big, big fan of Weston A. Price. Yeah, big fan, yeah Weston Price is, me too, big fan. I would say he's one of the first biological dentists. He was the um, chairman of the American Dental Association and... He did a lot of research when it comes to root canals, but also when it comes to nutrition and physical degeneration. And as you know, he traveled the whole world, basically finding ancestral living or endogenous people like Swiss people in the Alps. He also went to see the, the Aborigines or to Africa. And he, what he wanted to see is how the facial structure, how the whole body structure is basically grown when you eat regular foods or what happens if you get access to what he saw with his patients back then, industrial foods that just started sugar and refined oils and grains, gluten-containing grains, like all the processed foods that, are, that had started in the industrial age. So and what he found was that more ancestral living people had perfect white jaws, white nostrils, they would breathe through their noses, have space for all the 32 teeth, including all the wisdom teeth, obviously, no scoliosis, and perfect teeth, basically, and everything aligned and perfect for your name and your podcast. Yeah. But the, the kids or like the younger generation, which had access to the processed foods, let's just say processed foods or the newer foods, they would look like little monsters, crowded teeth, tooth decay, gum disease, basically mouth breathing and narrow faces, crooked and also um, scoliosis, basically like our teenagers nowadays. That's what he found 100 years ago. And he correlated it totally to nutritional deficiencies due to the wrong foods and lots of inflammation while growing up, missing on the key nutrients that build jaws, that build bone, that build teeth. And yeah, then you look like a little monster instead of perfectly aligned human being. Yeah. And this is still the problem in the Western world. You know how we grow up. So I had my wisdom teeth removed. I don't know if you did. I did not. Um, you did. That's awesome. They're, still, they're all in line or they're impacted? Uh, I don't know. I mean, hey, hey. I don't know. You don't even know. It could. you big. Do you tall guy? Tall guy. How tall? Uh, between 6'4 and 6'5, so almost two meters. Yeah, it could be. I, I can't really see it because it's a bit... Yeah. yeah. Could be that you... So if you could count three molars, yeah. then they are in line with... And then it's actually perfect. Because wisdom teeth, every tooth basically is a tiny organ. It has a lymph supply, it has a blood supply, it has an autonomic nervous system right. part. And there is this um, tooth meridian connection. And the wisdom teeth are connected to your whole autonomic nervous system, to your heart and um, the heart meridian and the small intestine. Mm. And basically what happens on the wisdom tooth area is, is um, the whole adrenal glands are, are connected. And yeah, it's kind of like your inner strength or your life force. Mm. And now imagine from that perspective, if you get taken out this before it even before there was even a chance to grow out, 
like in poop, most people get it removed when they're in puberty, it brings bigger problems yeah, to remove them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you have no space at one point, you probably need to be, they need to be removed because that's in itself pathological. Having no space for the teeth is a problem, but it started way, way earlier. But the common practice to remove wisdom teeth, let's say in between 14 years to 21 years old, is just go see a maxillofacial surgeon. Don't be prepared. Just go in there and then big surgery, big cuts, um, no preparation most likely leads to post-surgical problems in terms of a recovery. Yeah. It's called, it's called um, dry socket um, syndrome. A lot of people experience this. So what happens is that there's no blood clot. It hurts like hell. They will get, the patients get treated by, anti by antibiotics. Basically, this whole area really doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't heal up. And later on, something maybe we touch later is something happens so the, the wound closes itself like the gum tissue will close over time you will maybe get some antibiotics and then at one point it doesn't hurt anymore and the wound is closed but what happened over time is your body wasn't prepared for surgery it was too much of a trauma and the lack of nutrients plus being in puberty and all the um, epigenetic factors led to a disease called cavitation in layman's term, better known as NICO, neuralgia inducing cavitation or osteonecrosis or FDOJ, basically fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone, which means the bone never healed. So you have, wow. basically you have a hole in your bone back there underneath your gum, inside of the hard part of the bone, which is the cortical bone, but it's silent inflammation. Wow. It grew there over time. It's the perfect cave for anaerobic bacteria, and it's directly connected to this nerve called trigeminal nerve, which also happens to have a connection to the vagal nerve, which you're probably familiar with yeah. because this is the big part of your parasympathetic nervous system, leaving a huge chronic inflammation, chronic stressor, to tons of toxins and anaerobic bacteria in here. And the problem is nobody even knows about it because this is something you don't learn in university and it's still kind of in the quackery, whereas there's tons of research out there. So it's a big deal with the wisdom teeth wow. and you should really know what to do. And this is, I'm the surgeon. I remove wisdom teeth if I have to, but never unprepared. We will always prepare our patients with the right nutrition, with the right nutrients for at least four to six weeks prior. We will test lots of different blood work to see where they're at. We never just do like a high, I call it high, if you just catch somebody that, that is not prepared, not like you maybe or me who are already like doing everything for their health, and you, you pretty much will, will catch somebody in hibernation mode, meaning low vitamin D3, tons of nutritional deficiencies, eating the standard Western diet. It won't heal. It's no, not possible. Mm -hmm. And then you have a, end up having problems later in life due to these chronic inflammations that are still in your jawbone that you don't feel most of the time. Wow. And as you know, it's connected to heart meridian and adrenal glands, central nervous system. You can imagine what's the problem in the overall body. You don't feel it here, but maybe you have a chronic shoulder problem, chronic elbow problem, chronic skin disease, irritable bowel syndrome. Typic, uh, the usual suspects are autoimmune problems related to this, or um, chronic fatigue is a big one. So basically everything you see on a daily basis in this epidemic of chronic disease could be linked to your mouth. That's why I always say health starts in your mouth, and it basically makes sense because this is the entrance to this tube that goes or runs through, through your whole body. Yeah.